Two months ago, the British people cast their verdict on one of the most right-wing, incompetent, anti-union, morally bankrupt governments this country has ever seen. And Congress, it feels good to be meeting here in Brighton for the first time in 15 years under a Labour government with a 174-seat majority. Now, some Tory MPs had the good sense, or the lack of backbone, to do the chicken run before the votes were cast. The likes of Kwasi Kartang and Michael Gove scuttling away from the mess that they left behind. Others decided to face the voters. And while I am not one to revel in other people's misfortune, I have to say I enjoyed every single Portello moment in the early hours of July the 5th. It was a roll call of political failure. Gillian Keegan, gone. Grant Chaps, gone. Penny Mordant, gone. Jacob Rees-Mogg, gone. And of course, the former Prime Minister that couldn't outlast the letters, Liz Truss, gone. All now political history, Congress, goodbye, and good riddance to every single one of them. Now, they may be gone, but their miserable legacy remains. The legacy of public services, ruined by negligence and austerity. The legacy of an economy, shattered by a shambolic Brexit and unfunded tax cuts for the rich. And the legacy of a Britain, divided by nasty culture wars, dodgy PPE contracts and Downing Street parties. It has been a tough 14 years for the people that we represent. A tough 14 years, but ones we can look back on with some pride. Because despite the attacks, despite the anti-union legislation, despite the relentless squeeze on wages, we stood firm, defending working people, fighting austerity, helping Labour to rebuild. And we should be proud of our achievements. In the last 12 months alone, our membership up by 90,000. Unions winning for workers up and down the country. And on top of all that, one standout victory. Cast your mind back 12 months, Congress in Liverpool, and then our special Congress in December, we pledged to fight the Tories' spiteful attack on the right to strike, and fight it we did. A year on, and those appalling laws are about to be repealed, repealed before they have ever been used. Congress, generations of working people fought for the right to strike, and thanks to you, thanks to every union in this room, thanks to the whole of the trade union movement, we have protected the fundamental right to strike for future generations of working people. That's the difference unity makes, and that's the difference solidarity makes, and that's the difference Labour in government makes. Let me say up front, we won't always agree with the new government on every issue, but we know Keir Starmer and this government have the interests of working people at heart in a way that the Conservatives never did and never will. Congress, no government can put right 14 years of Tory chaos overnight. And in fact, no government can take on the job of rebuilding this country on its own. So yes, it is vital that Labour delivers its mandate for change. A new deal for working people delivered in full. Stronger public services clamping down on the tax cheats and the non-doms, bringing our railways back where they belong in public ownership. But Congress, Politics isn't a spectator sport, and neither is the long, hard job of rebuilding our country. We can't just elect a government, sit back, and ask them to right every wrong. We need to roll up our sleeves and get involved. So let's pledge today. We'll work with the new government to rebuild our public services. We'll play our part in recasting Britain's industrial future. And above all, we'll work with the government to face down those on the right 
who wish to sow the vision and discord in our communities. And our message to the tin pot politicians, the street thugs, and any ragtag group that tries to promote their message of hate is clear. Not in our workplaces, not in our communities, not on our watch. <laughs> Last year, I told you about my family and their story, a story common to so many of us. Working class people, hard working people, some born and bred here in the UK, some migrants from Ireland, from Poland, from as far away as Hong Kong. People who came to Britain and built their lives and raised their families here. They and generations of other migrants from the West Indies, from across Europe, from so many other places are now part of us. Enriching our communities, working alongside us, our neighbours and our friends. And they represent this country far better than the far right ever will. I don't believe for one moment that most of those who voted reform at the last election are racist. But let me say this clearly and unequivocally, Nigel Farage isn't a friend of the working class. He's a fraud. A public school educated, private equity loving, NHS privatizing, Putin apologist fraud. My granddad, Joe, came to Britain with the Polish RAF and played his part in the fight against fascism eight decades ago. In May, I found myself in southern Poland, boarding an overnight train to Kyiv to meet our sister unions. I visited a power station raised to the ground by Russian rockets. I saw city apartment blocks destroyed by missile strikes. And I visited the children's hospital in Kyiv I met some of those at the sharp and very human end of war. People like Katya, 14 years old, who was wounded by the Russian shelling that killed her mother. Six weeks after my visit, Putin bombed that same children's hospital. Operating theatres wrecked. Kids with cancer traumatised. Doctors and nurses hunting through the rubble for their colleagues. So when I see Farage, making excuses for Putin's illegal and indefensible invasion of Ukraine, it turns my stomach. Congress, I'll say it again, the far-right hate mongers are no friends of the working class. They're not patriots, they are frauds. And we had the proof of that. We had the proof of that just a few weeks ago. In Southport, we saw a deep, an unimaginable horror. Three children who lost their lives in the most terrible of circumstances. One of our own, David Stankham, a CWU member, lost his daughter, Elsie, aged seven. Some decided to use that tragedy as an excuse to attack places of worship, to loot shops, to attack the same emergency workers who rushed to save lives. Some used it to promote conspiracy theories and fake news, and some use it to drive clicks to their social media platforms. But that wasn't most of us, and it wasn't the best of us, and we should never forget that the overwhelming majority of people in this country are decent, are kind, and are generous. They're the ones who rebuilt a wall outside a mosque, who swept up the debris after the riots and who gathered not to hate but to show their love and their grief for the victims and so I want this movement to be clear we will always stand with the decent majority and we will always work to bring communities together that is our ambition and our responsibility <laughs> our movements rooted in communities across the country, on the shop floor, in the office, the work canteen, the community centre, the high rises and the high streets, demonstrating by actions as well as words that solidarity is the living, breathing spirit of this movement. Solidarity here at home, solidarity in every community 
and solidarity across the globe as well. And that includes our calls for peace, the return of hostages, and an immediate ceasefire and respect for international law in Gaza. An end to the carnage that is seeing innocent people targeted, trade union buildings bombed, and children starving, and a future built on a two-state solution, a safe and secure Israel, and a safe, secure, and free Palestine as well. Solidarity also means standing up against injustice, something this movement has always done. For the 97 victims of Hillsborough, for the Lawrence family, the Shrewsbury 24, the sacked union members at GCHQ, the victims of the Horizon scandal, the miners brutalised at Orgreave, and of course those who died tragically, and we know avoidably, at Grenfell. As a son of Merseyside, I am proud that the Labour government has committed to bring forward the Hillsborough law. Never again should the state hide behind lawyers and legal arguments. Never again should working class families be denied justice for decades. So a new government and a new opportunity. Our movement playing its part to rebuild the country and to bring our communities together something we have done throughout history, helping to rebuild the country after the Second World War, helping to create the NHS, helping workers win maternity pay and protections against discrimination. And in recent years, protecting workers during the pandemic, designing the furlough scheme, leading the fight for a minimum wage, all down to this movement. But all of those achievements, everything we aspire to do, needs a growing, vibrant, inclusive trade union movement. Congress, employment rights count for absolutely nothing if you don't have a strong union to enforce them. Cabinet ministers can't get you a pay rise or stop you being bullied at work. And MPs can't hold every bad boss to account. That's our job, the job of the trade union movement. So our challenge now, more reps, more unionized workplaces, more wins for workers. Last year, I told Congress we'd train at least 500 new black activists. Today, I can announce that, in fact, we trained 534 new black activists. And those new activists are just the start. Each and every year, we'll train hundreds more new black activists, recruit and train more women reps, and we'll take the trade union message into more workplaces. Working with good employers to secure the decent jobs our members deserve, and using those new rights to hold every bad boss to account. Days after the election, GMB members at Amazon and Coventry staged their historic vote for union recognition. Amazon, one of the biggest union busters on the planet, threw millions at stopping their workers from getting a collective voice, deployed every cynical trick in the book, and after all of that money, all of that bullying, all of that scaremongering, they won by just 29 votes. So let's pay tribute to the 1,400 Amazon workers who stood up to be counted, who took 38 days of strike action and who very nearly beat one of the most powerful corporations in the world. And let's pledge to them and every other worker facing an anti-union boss, this is not the end, this is just the beginning. Today, I want to put Amazon and every other anti-union, anti-worker boss on notice. If you think you can get away with paying poverty wages, if you think it's acceptable to force people into work when they're sick, if you want to fire and rehire your staff so you can put a few bob on the share price, think again. Our movement is coming for you. Our movement is going to take on the bad bosses, and we are going to win. MSL's gone, the New Deal delivered in full, rebuilding our public services, wages growing, hope back in our politics. Congress, I can't imagine a privilege bigger than being your General Secretary. Every day I meet inspiring people, union activists, reps, members, people doing some of the hardest and most important jobs that you could think of, cleaning hospitals, 
building new power stations and railways, inspiring our young people, keeping the public safe, all united by one belief. Together, we are stronger. Together, we can rebuild our communities. Together, we can win for working people. Congress, together, we are unstoppable. Solidarity Congress, thank you.